Hi, this is Vanta Gakan, and welcome to another CGTuts.com tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about the linear workflow and why it works and how we can use it inside of Cinema 4D. It, this tutorial does focus on Cinema 4D, but it can easily applied, be applied to whichever 3D package you're using, as long as you can change the gamma on your materials and the final output. Okay, so let's get started. The uh, first thing we should probably do is try and figure out what the linear workflow is. Well basically the linear workflow is making sure our color space, the um, the way our monitor and the way Cinema 4D interprets pixels and their intensities is linear. When I'm talking about a linear color space that means each pixel represents a light intensity. This is more in tune with the real world because you get less contrast in the middle, you get all the midtones, there's less contrast, you get all the midtones, your blacks are truly black, your whites are truly white, there's no banding uh, in the middle. If you've noticed, uh, when you render a scene in Santa Cinema 4D, you really get kind of harsh shadows, and uh, your GI, your global illumination renders in the beginning, seem to be really dark when you've added a lot of lights. The reality is that your scene isn't really that dark. Cinema 4D actually works by itself in a linear color space because Cinema 4D, when it's rendering, calculates it in 32-bit. The reason why the final output looks so dark is because it's converting it to your monitor's sRGB color space. Now, if you're on a Mac up until 10 point, Mac OS X 10.6, you're using a color space with a gamma of 1.8. So when I say gamma 2.2, and if we change anything, any one of our gammas and by dividing it by 2.2 or raising our final output by 2.2, by if you're on a Mac before Mac OS X 10.6, you're going to want to use 1.8 in place of 2.2, but if you're on Mac OS X 10.6 Leopard, you can use 2.2. So what's happening is as your scene renders, it calculates the light, it wants to convert it to your monitor's color space, the, which will most likely be the sRGB color space which a get with a gamma of 2.2. Now you might ask, why would it convert it? Why doesn't it keep it in the same color space? Well, because your monitors are designed to, are designed to simulate light in the exact same way that the, uh, your eyes see it. Our eyes are mostly more more sensitive to our darker and midtones. Our highlights really we really don't see changes in highlight that much, but our midtones and dark colors, we can see different differences in those really easily. So the sRGB color space has a gamma of 2.2, which means it's logarithmic. And when Cinema 4D converts it to that, you get that harsh contrast inside of your render. Looking at the sRGB gamma 2.2 color space, you can see that you get a lot of banding towards where the middle midtones are, and it's a, lo it's a lot darker than a regular gradient from black to white. You get a lot more black, especially towards your midtones. What we're going to do is increase our input gamma so that the final output is linear. The easiest way to do that is take the gamma 2.2 and invert it. What I mean by invert is raise 2.2 to an exponent of negative 1. When we do that, we put 2.2 as the denominator so that when Cinema 4D converts it to the final output of sRGB, the final output actually has a linear color space as long with a, as long as long along with a gamma of 1.1.1.0. Now, the way to do this is we're going to have to take all of our bitmaps and um, all of our color channels, luminance, let's see, let's open up new material, our color, diffuse, luminance, environment, and specular color channels are all, all output a RGB all output in RGB, so we're going to have to change the gammas on those. Things like transparency, reflection, 
fog, bump, normal, those types of channels don't really output on RGB, so we can leave those alone and they'll render out just fine. We don't need to filter our bump channel or the bitmap we use in our bump channel. So go ahead and open up your room, that's Cinema 4D, and let's just go ahead and render. I cached my GI pass, so we should just start to render right, right away. I'm going to pause the, um, the recording and then we'll see our final output. And you'll see just how contrast, contrasted our render is, even though we have GI on. Okay, so our render's done, and right away you can see we've got a problem. Our render is really dark, especially in the hallway. You can barely see the picture or the stairs going up. And our shadows are really contrast, contrasted. It's especially right over here, you can see just how dark it is compared to our regular marble floor. So, what's the solution? Well, let's examine our scene. So, let's go into lighting. We already have a physical sky lighting up in our, our, our entire scene and the time and location technically we should be getting a lot of light pouring into our scene so we could add more diffuse bounces in our diffuse depth but we've already we already have three diffuse bounces so we really should be getting a lot more light going into our scene well here's where the linear work linear workflow comes in Cinema 4D does have that light calculated. It is there, but when it converts our scene into our final render in the picture viewer, it converts it to the sRGB color space, which is our monitor's color space. So our render ends up being a lot darker than it has to be. So the solution is to just increase our gamma. So let's create a new effect go into the render settings go to effect color correction and let's increase the gamma to 2.2 again if you're on a Mac running OSX before the 10th update you're gonna to want to use 1.8 so let's render it now I'm gonna pause the render again and then we can see our new render Alright, so our render's done, and now you can see our new edited color space and the new render that it produced, and right away you can see that where we had extremely dark portion before, we've got an acceptable amount of light coming in. Going upstairs, uh, I did turn off the area light that was supposed to be up here, but going upstairs we've got a lot more light than we had before. Our shadows are a lot more balanced. They're not contrasting that much with our assets like our wood and marble materials and overall we've got a better render lighting wise there is one problem though if you look at our assets like our bitmaps and our materials they look washed out the reason being we increased the gamma of our render while Cinema 4D since it works in 32-bit it, while it's rendering it had no problem increasing the gamma of our light. Our assets, on the other hand, were working on the sRGB color space, like our JPEGs that we used for textures and our materials. So when we increase the gamma with our color correction effect, 2.2, we washed out our colors. Basically what we did was take our initial input and just raise the gamma. While our light is linear, is linear now, our assets are not. They, their gamma is much too high. So, how do we fix this? Well, we invert the gamma, the sRGB gamma, on our assets. That means raising, again, raising our, two point, our gamma of 2.2 to, to a power of negative 1, which puts it in the denominator, so that when we render it, our assets have a linear gamma. So let's go ahead and do that. Purposefully I have two materials here that already have the effect put on them because I wanted the uh, materials a little bit brighter. So since 
we're going to be increasing our gamma by 2.2 with our color correction effect and I have the gamma initially set to 2.2 we can just set the gamma to 1 for these two materials and it'll end up being the same hue and value wise as before we did our color correction. The rest of the materials on the other hand let's just select all of them deselect the marble it's a shader so we can't really affect the color correction and select the color channel and just put all of their color channels in a filter and change the gamma to 1 over 2.2 and something like 0.455 yeah 0.455 now you'll notice some of our materials didn't change at all these are our materials that just have a color especially the white it may not seem like it it's affected at all but changing the gamma on a white material has an effect on the specular we don't have a specular on this material but even though it's pure white you still need to change the gamma especially on this material it has a specular. Okay, so all our materials. Now some of our materials we need to check they don't have luminance or diffuse channels on. Okay, we're good on that front. Now let's render our scene again and you'll see we have the correct linear light and now our materials also have gamma 1.0 when we render again if you're working on a Mac before the 10.6 update you're gonna want to change this to 1 over 1.8 you'll get something like 0.556 and in the color correction you're going to want to change the gamma to 1.8 as well. Okay, so let's render. Again, I'm going to pause the render just to save some time. And we'll get to see our final output. Alright, our render is done. And right away you can see with our correctly color cast materials, our scene looks a lot better than what we started out with. We started out with a pretty drab and contrasted scene, but now we've got more definition in our midtones, our specular, especially on the outside wall. It's picking up a lot more light. It's a lot more physically correct. And one thing you'll notice using the linear workflow is since every pixel now equates to every pixel value now equates to light intensity things like anti-aliasing, speculars and just overall your scene will be a lot more predictable basically your scene will be a lot more predictable you won't get light, art light or shadow artifacts where you didn't expect to see them based on where you placed your lights and it'll be color balanced a lot more correctly based on real world physics and yeah that's basically it that's uh, just the linear workflow and how it applies to Cinema 4D um, download the scenes you'll get three you'll get one where it's just the base room another with the room color corrected with the gamma 2.2 and the third and final room scene where we have the assets like our materials with a gamma of point 445 and the uh, correct color correction and you'll get one more final scene where with just some basic uh, simple shapes where you can see how much better speculars work with the uh, linear workflow. So I'm Monte Gikan. I hope you uh, got something from the tutorial and I hope you can use it in uh, your further projects. Uh, that's the end. Bye.